Okay, good evening everybody, and thank you for bearing with us during this long absence of the Sugyashir. Welcome back, welcome back to winter, or almost winter. The topic of the uh, shear tonight is learning Torah during Chazara Sashatz. <clears throat> this, is a, this is a loaded topic because th we're going to see the vast majority of poskim tell us, based on the language of the Shulchan Aruch itself, that there's only one thing a person should be doing during Chazara Tashatz, and that is standing or if not standing, then at least sitting at attention, answering Baruch Hu Baruch Shemo and Amen. Our sages ordained Chazarat Hashatz for people who were Amei Haaretz, who were not capable of davening the Amida themselves. And even though nowadays Kulanu Bikiim, we are all considered to be well-versed by virtue of the printing press, of course, and that we all have access to reciting Shmon Esrei ourselves. The Takanas Chachamim, the original Takana of having a Chazara Sashat remains in place and it, it is required of us to conform to that Takana not only as a Shlich Tzibur reciting it but as a Tzibur being attentive to it. Well, maybe we should close this door. Thank you so So what we're not going to be discussing tonight is the shaila of whether or not it's permitted to converse during Chazara Sashatz. Because there is no shaila. That shaila has been resolved, and no one even discusses whether it's permitted or not permitted. It is clearly asur to engage in sichat chulin, in any kind of conversation whatsoever, during Chazara Sashatz. That's codified in Shulchan Aruch without any commentary or any qualification whatsoever. The question is, what if I am uh, <clears throat> in the midst of, or in the shul during Chazar Sashatz, and I want to do other things that are not going to uh, be disruptive, that are going to be in, in conversant in any way, but I want to remove my focus from Chazar Sashatz because I was already Yodse Shmones, right? And I want to engage in Torah study. Is that permitted or not? Now, interestingly enough, we have a very early source that suggests that that's permitted. There's a, the Sefer Orchos Chaim, which is attributed to the Rush, the great Rishon, the Rush, who, in this very short uh, work, Orchos Chaim, details a person, Seder Hayom. And he writes, this is in source number one. The Rush writes that a person should not converse from the time he begins Baruch Sha'amar until he finishes his silent Shmon Esrei. Nor should a person converse during Chazara Sashatz. Ele im kein bedivrei Torah o bidvar mitzvah. Unless the following exceptions. To engage in divrei Torah, or to engage in words that are necessary for the performance of a mitzvah, or to give shalom to someone, or to respond to someone's shalom. Which, if we only had this piece, then that would be an immediate heter to allow people to greet each other in shul during Chazar Sashatz, how are you? What's up? How's your family? Da, da, da. And that's why I'm very reluctant to offer this, because some, someone may turn off the shear at this point and say, oh, so I'm not so bad. <laughs> I'm doing everything right. But as you'll see very clearly in a moment, no one paskins like this or Chos Chaim. No one. Let's take a look at the Shulchan Aruch. Yes, Al? I may be jumping ahead. You are. <laughs> Go ahead. But for all the Gaboyim here and around uh, what's their uh, permission or not in terms of discussing uh, whatever is coming up? Well, you know, the, the, the policy that we have here is we tell the Gaboim, we know that you want to be able to, uh, to discuss what has to be done for the Kriya Satora, but it is disruptive nonetheless. 
So you should go outside the shul to discuss it. That's, that's just some, I mean, that's just common sense. That anything that's going to be disruptive during Chazor HaSashat should not be taking place inside the shul. Now, the Shulchan Aruch says, Keshashatz Chazer HaTfila, and by the way, there's a separate sif that says that categorically it's us to engage in Sichat Chulin, in any kind of, of uh, gratuitous conversation during uh, during Chazar Sashatz. But in this particular Sif, which is in Sif Dalit, in Simen Kof Chaf Dalit, he writes, Keshashatz Chazer HaTfila, HaKahal Yesh Lahem Lishtok, Ulechavein Libirchot Labrachot Shemivarecha Chazan Velanot Amein. When the Shliach Tzibur is repeating his Shmon Esrei, the Tzibur should be silent and to uh, be attentive to the blessings that the Chazan is saying so that they can answer Amen. V'im ein tet mechuvanim or mechavanim lebirchotav, karov liyot birchotav levatala. If you don't have a minimum of nine people responding Amen to the brachos of the Shliach Tzibur, then it's close to in other words, there's, there's an almost here. It's almost as if the Shliach Tzibur is saying a, every bracha levatala, wasteful brachas, which is, by the way, why the post can say, based on this language, that if a Shliach Tzibur is repeating Shmona Esrei and he's suspicious that perhaps he will not have nine people responding amen to his brachos, what should he have in mind? That his Shmona Esrei is a tefilas nedava that he's sort of adding the second voluntary Shmona Esrei. Normally we don't allow a person to say a second Shmona Esrei as a voluntary additional Shmona Esrei, except in this instance. The post can say that since you're doing uh, Chazar Sashatz and you're worried that maybe it's a bracha levatala because you don't have the tzibor engaged, so then just have in mind that this is a, a second shmo, voluntary Shmona Esrei to hedge your bets. Okay, so and therefore, you should take the approach that in the event that I'm the ninth that's responding, I better be attentive, because who knows who else is listening. Now, it's true. I mean, sometimes you look around you during Chazar Sashats, and it's sometimes, even in a very large <laughs> minyan, Baruch Hashem, like we have in many of the minyanim here, Sometimes it's, you're, you're hard-pressed to find nine people who are attentively responding. Uh, Amen. Okay. Anyway, so he says, And you should have kavana to what the chazan is saying. Now, we skip now to number four. Is there a tour on this? There's, there's a lot of stuff. We just had to whittle it down. I'm just curious if he has a tour, of course, is the son of the Rush, so the question is whether he's... Oh, yeah, no, I don't think, I don't think that, because the Rush doesn't say this in his parish on, on, uh, on, uh, on the Shas. Yes. This is Archus Chaim, so I'm not even, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the tour's uh, uh, interaction with the Archus Chaim is. Okay, skip to number four. The Magin Avram says over here, Yesh lahem lishtok. Ayin Bichuvas Mem Ayin. That's the Ramami Pano. He's an Italian posek who lives at the end of the 16th, beginning of the 17th century. Al Ha'anashim Shalom Dim Be'es Chazar Sashatz Hatfila O Omrim Tachnunim. He says he discusses people in his time. We're going to look at the Chuva from the Ramami Pano inside, because the Magen Avram is just quoting it. And he says that there are people that he's aware of in his community that learn Torah or recite Tachnunim. They say Tehillim, or some other supplication during Chazar HaSashatz. Is that correct or not? So, So he says, you know what? If at least they're answering Amen at the end of a bracha, then leave them alone. In other words, don't protest. Don't tell them they have to stop learning. Fine. It may not be the optimal, but don't protest. Aval b'sefer vavei ha'amudim kara tagar alehem. But the sefer vavei ha'amudim, which is appended to the sefer shalah, I'm not sure the authorship, but he writes that you're not supposed to do this. This is wrong. Uchemo the chain mashma mimashakos of simen tzadi sif yudches, and he points to the Magen Avram 
to a previous section in Shulchan Aruch in Simen Sari as proof that a person should not be learning Torah or reciting supplications during Chazar Sashatz, even if he's able to answer Amen at the proper time. Now, what is he pointing to in Simen Sari? So if you take a look in source number three, that's the Shulchan Aruch. The Shulchan Aruch says um, that a person that, uh, should always try to daven in a base medrash, m- even more so than a base hakneses, because a base hamedrash is a place where people study Torah. Um, a- as long as there's a minion there, it's better to daven in a base medrash than in a base hakneses. And then the Rama adds, "V'yesh omrim da'afilu below yirad afli spal beveis hamedrash hakavu alo." And some say that even without a minion, it's better to daven in a base medrash. But v'davka misha Torah umnaso ve'eno mispatel belav hachi. But that's only if you're a full-time Torah learner, like if you're in kolel, and that's the way you spend your entire day. Then sometimes, according to some, you have a heter to daven even biyachidus in a base medrash instead of davening with a minion in shul. And then he says va'afilu hachi lo yargil atzmolasos came. But despite the fact that it might be preferred you shouldn't do it as a regular habit. In other words, don't let people see you davening without a minion in the base medrash. Why? He says, Shalo yilmadu ame ha'aretz mimenu v'yisbat lu mi base hakneses. He says, because you don't want onlookers who are unlearned to look on and get the wrong example. If they see the kolel younger man uh, davening biyachidus in the base medrash, they're going to say to themselves, oh, I can also do that. Why do I have to daven in a minion? If the younger man, Rabbi so-and-so, is davening biyachidus in the base medrash, then I can do the same thing. So don't make a habit of doing it, because people will get the wrong message from it. The kol shekein shelo yasok b'torah b'beis hakneses bizman shahatzibor omem slichos utechinos, and certainly a, shouldn't, a person should not be study, uh, studying Torah in the shul at a time when people are davening, when they're saying slichos and other things. Even though you might have a justification because you're a full-time scholar, and therefore you're going to be uh, engaging in Torah study intensively, and therefore maybe you can absolve yourself of some of the various supplications that the tzibor are saying, but nonetheless, you should not do it in their presence because it's setting the wrong example. So what is the Magen Avram pointing to? He's basically saying that even though there may be a heter, that during Chazar Sashats you can go ahead and learn Torah like the, uh, like the Ramami Pano says, to learn Torah and, uh, and to even say Tchinot, and to even say your own supplications, but you're setting the wrong example for other people. And therefore, people who are Amei Haaretz will get the wrong idea that they don't have to listen to Chazara Sashats. And therefore, you should refrain from doing anything other than just answering Baruch Hu, Baruch Shemo, and Amei. Now, there's a lot to discuss here, I know. So I just want to ask request. Let's suspend our, our questions for now, and let's just go a little bit further first. The Mishnah Brura now also says, in source number six, he, he paraphrases the Magen Avram, and, and by the way, there are some vi- there's some very strong language here. The Balatanya in the Rav Shulchan Aruch, which I don't have copied for you, says, Go Arinbo, we rebuke a person who studies Torah during Chazar HaSashatz. Um, um, he says, but the, but the Mishnah Brura says, he says that you shouldn't even learn Torah during Chazar Sashats, even if you can say Amen at the end. He says, Shalo tihiya Amen yitoma, so that the Amen should not be an orphan Amen, because normally you have to know what bracha you're responding to in order to answer Amen. The Gemara talks about an Amen Yisoyma, an orphan Amen, that you're aware that a bracha has been said, but you don't know what bracha has been said. That's called an Amen Yisoma. An orphan ame. So we don't. That's not. That's not desirable. That's not correct. Kamoshi's bar gamkin lo yofa hemosim shimalom dem yifnu limudam ame hearts yul madu mehen shalol lahazin lo shatz viyasku b'sicha b'telachas v'shalom nimtzu machtiyin esarab. And he he sort of unpacks what the Magen Avram is saying. 
He's saying that it's not right. He says, because if people see a Talmud Chacham studying Torah during Chazar Sashats, they're going to say, oh, so I don't have to listen to Chazar Sashat. So what are they going to do? Are they going to open up a Sefer? No, they're not learned. But they see someone who's, that they respect not paying attention to Chazar Sashats. So what's going to cause them to do is say, well, I don't have to pay attention to Chazar Sashats, so let me do something else. And then they engage in an idle conversation. And, that's, and therefore, by setting that example, you're causing others to sin. That's, that's the thing that he's saying. You're really, mamish causing other people to sin because they say, if Rabbi so-and-so can disregard Chazar Sashats, so then I can as well. Okay. The Kaf HaChaim adds an additional facet, an additional feature, perhaps a little bit more on the mystical side. He quotes, I believe this is from Reb Chaim Vital, V'zel Shono, Uveis Kriyas HaTorah O Chazor HaShashat Satvila, Asr Lo Laasok B'Torah, De'en Le'arev Tikun B'Tikun. See, look at this language, he says, that during Torah reading and during uh, Chazor HaShashat, a person should not be engaged in Torah study because you're mixing two types of tikkun. There are two ways that a Jew remedies his soul when he's inside the shul. One is through Torah study and one is through tefillah. So by mixing your Torah study during the time of tefillah, you're, you're, conf you're sort of mixing one kind of tikkun with another kind of tikkun. That's the language that the Kaf Chaim uses. Ki l'chol echad zman b'fnei atzmo. Each one has its own time. L'chol zman va'et, as it says in Kohelis. He says, and it sounds like, based on that, that even to think about a Torah idea, you're not supposed to do during Chazor HaShatz. I'm sure there are a lot of people who fulfill this very, very stringently. <laughs> they don't, you know, as that old, the old, the old joke is, you know, what is the rabbi supposed to say about someone who really didn't have any virtue in his life. So one thing you can say is, he never thought about Torah when he was in the washroom, right? Ah, oh, what a righteous man, right? So in other words, so some say that you can't even think about Torah ideas during Chazor HaShatz because you have to be focused on what the Shliach Tzibur is saying. V'yihiyu enav lemata, v'libo lemala, kemo b'tfilato mamash belachash. He says, and therefore your eyes should be below, your heart should be soaring above, figuratively, so just like the, it is prescribed what, the way you're supposed to approach Hashem during the silent Shemona Esrei. Okay, and, and he goes on and he says about the importance of having the proper kavana, um, and, and then he writes at the end, he says, V'chein hu lefi divrei ha'arizal shekasav, he says like this, he says, you know, we're used to thinking that Chazar HaShatz is a sort of a remnant of an of a earlier Takana that no longer has any benefit for us today. But the Arizal says that that's not the case. The Arizal says that Chazar HaShatz provides a vital communal Shemona Esrei that you don't have when you daven silent Shemona Esrei to yourself. In other words, he says that really every single Jew needs a Chazar HaShatz because everyone needs to be part of a communal Shemona Esrei. In other words, intrinsically, there's value, even if you are a Baki, even if you are, are well-versed. Isn't that why we say modem in the repetition? Because we're connecting... Well... Well, I mean, the reason why we say modem is because when it comes to thanking Hashem, a person has to personalize the thanks. But we don't all say Chazor HaShatz together. We listen to the, except for modem, and except for Amen, we listen to the Shliach Tzibur. The, the Arizal says there has to be a communal Shmona Esrei. And in, in many respects, it's even of a higher madrega than a person's private Shmona Esrei. And therefore, the Kafa Chaim writes, the Imkain im lo yiten kol dato lechaven al hashatz mitchilata chazara ve'ad sofa mila b'mila, hare lo kiye mitzvah tefilata chazara ketikna. And if you don't pay attention during chazara hashatz, then you have not fulfilled 
that sort of mystical or, or, or supernatural form of Shemona Esrei that is a commu- on a communal, a communal Shemona Esrei. Yes, these are all very, very compelling ideas. I want us to take a look very briefly at the tshuva of the Ramami Pano inside, because sometimes there's a certain nuance that you capture um, when you look at the original tshuva. It's not, very, it's not long at all. Source number eight. <coughs> the Ramami Pano writes, Shminit, it's a whole series of tshuvas that he's giving, the eighth in a series of, of tshuvas, is Mishuhu Baki Batfila. The question is, a person is well versed in Shmon Esra. And so he doesn't really need the Chazar Sashatz. In other words, the Ramami Pano is not taking into account the Arizal special communal Shmon Esra issue, because that's a, that's a Kabbalistic issue. But he says, based on the simple understanding, I don't need the Chazar Sashatz, and, uh, and therefore I want to be able to study Torah, and I'll answer Amen at the end of every bracha. And even though at times I'll be so engrossed in my learning that I won't even be aware what bracha the Shliach Tzibur is holding in, but we know from the Gemara that the, the Jews of Alexandria had such a huge synagogue without the, uh, you know, without the acoustics that we would normally want, you know, bigger probably even than the Bayit, so that people all the way in the back couldn't hear. They didn't know what, what, when to answer Amen. So they would wave a flag or a kerchief to let people know that it was time to answer Amen. So why can't I do that as well? Even if I don't know what bracha he's holding in, it's like uh, no different from the waving of the handkerchief in the Alexandrian synagogue. So tshuva. He says, Rov ha'olam enon nisharim, the korim beseder karbanos v'chayot se b'shar shashatz yoreid, yoreid. He says, in his time, remember, 17th, early 17th century, he says, in Italy, he says, most of my kehillah is not very meticulous about chazar sashatz. He says, my observation is, not that they're schmoozing. These are very righteous, holy people. He says, but what people are doing is they're playing catch-up. They didn't have time to recite Karbanos earlier in Shacharis, so they do catch up during Chazar Sashatz. He says, Af al Gav Delo Yeus Avdin. He says, I don't think it's the right thing that they're doing. <laughs> However, Uvachol ki hai gavna ikam ishom hanach lahem. But in all situations like this, if you know that they're not going to listen because, you know, they figure that this is being holy to catch up what I couldn't say before. Leave it alone. They're better to leave it alone. Don't make a big stink about it. The cave in Degolu Daitaihu Sheinan Mechabdin Lotzeis, Afal Pi She Ya'anu Lif Amim Veinam Yodim Al Eiza Bracha, Ein Kan Amen Yesoma. So he says that if, as long as they um, uh, try their best to focus to say Amen at the end of every Bracha, then it's not a problem of Amen Yesoma, of an orphan Amen. And he doesn't go into why. We're not going to go into why that is. But he says, as long as you know that you're answering Amen to a certain bracha, it's not a problem. And then he says a huge chiddush. He says a huge chiddush. And that is, we can even argue that these people are putter from responding to the Chazar Sashatz because once they've started studying Torah, they're already engaged in a mitzvah, and we know the principle of ha'oseg b'mitzvah, patur min ha'mitzvah. Say it the other way around. They're in the middle of tefillah, so there's patur from the Torah. Yeah, but you could say that uh, maybe he started learning before chazar Sashatz. So I'm patur now. By the way, uh, many poskim take issue with the Ramami Pano on this particular issue. There's a lot of writing about this because there are many instances where Talmud Torah is the one case where we don't say Ha'oseik b'mitzvah patr min ha'mitzvah right, which is why we require you to vacate the base medrash you know, but from Megillus Esther and things like that and if it's stated specifically you're not supposed to do this so wouldn't it be a mitzvah over there? 
Um, he he didn't say he he said lo yeo savdi. He says it's not an avera. It's 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 not it's not so nice. It's not nice what they're doing. It, that's literally what lo yeot. It's not not eh, it's not nice. The imanu mitzvah kaav the uvechal mitzvah vaos mitzuva vaosa ninhu the ha mitzuvim heim bekach ela shadavar acher gorim lem li pater lefi shaa the heimi kol makom chotvim et ha mitzvah uviadam shtayim. He says they're obligated in Chazar Sashats, but they've exempted themselves by start, starting to study Torah. So they're adding on to their zuchus by not only uh, studying Torah or st- reciting karbonos, which makes them putter, but they're also getting the added mitzvah of answering Amin. So they're hopping. They're hopping an extra mitzvah. And so not only are they not bad people, they're actually doing something virtuous. The Gemara, the, the mission in Kilai mentions there was a man named Rabbi Yossi who used to grab mitzvahs even though he was exempt from them. And so he's saying this is also what these people are doing. They're inherently exempt because they've already started reciting Karbanos or studying Torah. And they want to chop another mitzvah by answering Amen. Aval ba Alexandria shall mitzrayim yodim hayu al yedei hanafa sudrin im hibracha rishon shniya oshlishis va anu machzikim atzmenu bikim lihitchayev bat fila shelo yehishatz motziotanu. He says, you know, the people in Alexandria really it's not so analogous because they used to wave a different flag for each brach of Shmon Esrei. So you could take issue with this and say, if you don't really know which bracha you're responding to, so then it's not like the people of Alexandria. Each, each bracha of the Shmona Esrei had a different flag. So at least they were aware. He says, but we consider ourselves Bikiim, that we are well versed in reciting our own Shmona Esrei, and therefore we don't really need Chazar Esashatz. But, but in reality... That's not such a such a clear cut thing because re- really we should uh, consider ourselves non bikiim and really listen to the whole chazar sashat shimlo kivanenu kol atzarech mechavein latzeit b'shash shatz yoreid. He says, and that's really why even a well versed person in Shmona Esrei should listen attentive to, attentively to chazar sashat, because let's say he didn't have proper kavana in one of the blessings. That's another benefit of listening attentively, attentively to Chazar Sashatz that you'll get, you'll fill in whatever you missed and you didn't have proper kavana. And therefore, I retract what I had originally said that even though I said it's not a problem of an Amin Yasoma, I think it may be a problem of an Amin Yasoma because it's not analogous to the Alexandrian synagogue. And therefore, in conclusion, it, would is, it is much better not to do anything and to respond amen to every bracha of the shliach tzibur. So even the Ramami Pana, who is the one who says, Don't protest these people, leave them alone, because they're not going to listen to you anyway. And it's not really so bad what they're doing. But on second thought... It's really better not to do that. It's, there are so many reasons why we should be attentive during Chazar Sashatz. Rav Moshe is of the same opinion. Now, I just want to uh, point out that we're going to look at two tshuvas, one from Rav Moshe and one from Rav Sternbach, and they say two opposite things. Remember, the Shulchan Aruch had said that it is so important to respond to the Chazar Sashatz if there are not nine people, then it could be that the Shliach Tzibur's blessings are a bracha levatol. So if I'm not going to be attentive to Chazar Sashatz, I'm sort of relying on nine other people to be responsive. And that's why the Shulchan Aruch says, well, that's sort of abdicating and arrogating it to somebody else. Maybe you are the ninth guy. And so therefore, that's another reason why you should be attentive, to make sure that the Shliach Tzibur's blessings are not levatol. By the way, just write down if you have, a, if you have an issue, because I just want to get through some of these sources. So Rav Moshe says 
that this whole idea of the Ramami Pano, that don't protest, you know, if they're going to learn during Chazorah Sashatz, Rav Moshe says, well, wait a minute. That's only if you know for sure that you got nine guys responding Shmona, to Shmona Esrei without you. And he says like this, it's a longer tshuva, but he says, Ovalanias daiti, in source number nine, Ovalanias daiti nira, dehu rakish ika asara shashomen chazara sashatz. That's only, you can only justify the Ramami Pano's argument of learning during chazara sashatz when you know that there are ten people that are engaged in chazara sashatz, the shliach tzibor and nine other people. He says, Velo mafsikin klal shel hacherim, Velo mafsikin klal, uh, he says, and these and these ten people are totally de- devoted to that endeavor. He says, because what, would, what did the Ramami Pano say? He said, the, he said the reason he said it's okay for you to go ahead and, and do it. Don't protest. But then the Mishnah Bura says. But you know, it's really not so such a proper thing because other people are going to learn from you. The Amei Haaretz are going to learn from you, which implies that if it were not for that issue, that other pe- people are going to learn from you and do the wrong thing, then it's perfectly justifiable to go ahead and do that and do that. Avol kesheleka asara aser midina daha takanas chazaras hashatz ha'isa leilu shahayamotzi osam b'tzvila shmon esrei. He says because it's. If, you're, if there aren't nine people responding and you're pulling away from that group and you're not taking responsibility to be one of those nine, so then you're causing the Shliach Tzibur's blessings to be a brach levatala. So Rav Moshe says, sometimes it's not only a problem to learn during Chazar Sashatz because people are going to get the wrong uh, idea, but it's Asr Afilu Midina. And that's Rav Moshe's Chiddush. And he says that, therefore, in all instances, jump to the last line of Rav Moshe. He says, lilmod bishas chazaras hashatz ofan, yesh midina v'yesh avram. He says, and therefore, it is always forbidden to study Torah during chazaras hashatz. Sometimes it'll be because you're pulling, out, you're pulling out of the nine and you're leaving less than nine people to respond on me. And sometimes it's going to be usher only because people will get the wrong message, like the Magen Avram had said. But either way, it's problematic. There are so many poskim who say this, gedolei ha poskim, that it's like it's not even funny. Like the the preponderance of people who say that it's usher to learn during Chazar Sashatz is like ninety percent or ninety five percent. There's a small minority who justify learning during Chazar Sashatz, but the majority, uh, Rav Waldenberg and Sitz Eliezer speaks very strongly about this as well. And we'll see Rav Sternbach now, to take a look at Rav Sternbach, but he says just the opposite. He says, Nishalti imutur lilmod be'is Chazar Sashatz. I've been asked if it's permitted to study Torah during Chazar Sashatz. He says, V'nira shema shekosvu ha-poskim lahatir kesha'una amen besof, Rav Sternbach says, he says, you know, the Magen Avram said, really it's technically permitted, but it's usher because you're going to be giving the Amei Haaretz the wrong idea, that they don't have to be attentive during Chazar Sashatz. He says, He says, He says, it's going to depend. He says, it appears to me as if Rav Sternbach is latching onto the Arizal that was quoted by the Kafachaim. And he's basically saying, he says, it depends. If you have ten people who are engaged in Chazar Sashatz attentively, so then there's no heter even me'ikar hadin to study Torah. Because once there's a communal Shmona Esrei, you have to participate in that. And you cannot remove yourself from that communal Shmona Esrei. Gam mitzad ikr tzvila satzibor, aval matze hayom ba'avonosena harabim, she'en asara shomim, rak ze ponekan v'ze sham. But he says, but nowadays the norm is not to have ten people attentive during Chazar Sashatz. Everyone's doing their own thing. Zelomade, the Zelmer Tehillim, one guy's learning, 
one guy's reciting Tehillim, O Mam Sheikh Betvila, one guy is taking his, you know, being extra pious and he's davening an extra long Shmon Esrei, Ve'ain Tes Shomim. And therefore, you don't have nine people who are listening attentively to the Chazar Sashats. Uchahaygavna Hashats Chozerak Begeder Pores Al Shema. And in that case, you don't have the benefit of a communal Shmon Esrei. You just have a Shliach Tzibor who is reciting an additional Shmon Esrei, but it is not a communal Shmon Esrei. Avolo Nikra Tzvila Satzibor, Elake Shetisha Shomu Mimachab Nalbir Chosav. Velachena Chiyuv Rak Lishma Velano Zomi. Avol ein chiyuv midina lishma kol mila v'rak mishum chilol Hashem. He says that's what the Magen Avram was referring to. He says in that situation where you don't have nine people attentively responding to the shliach tzibur, that's where the only requirement is to answer amen, and then you could technically be engaged in other stuff, right? And the only problem is the chilol Hashem that amei haaretz are going to learn from you and get the wrong message. So we mamash have two opposite approaches. One is from Rav Moshe and one is from Rav Sternbach. Rav Moshe says that if you have, if you can, if you take an inventory of the other people in shul, and you see that there are nine people attentively responding, gesunter hate you can learn, and the only reason it's it's problematic is because people will get the wrong impression from you. Rav Sternbach says just the opposite. He says. That if you have nine people responding attentively, then it's your obligation to participate in the communal Shmon Esrei, and you can't learn in that situation. That's when it kicks in. What? That's when, it, that's when communal Shmon Esrei kicks in, and you have to be a part of that. So, you know, when you put these two together, then you can't win. In other words, there really is no basis uh, for learning during Shmon Esrei. Okay. Fantastic story. I love this story. I found this tshuva uh, from a rav called Machluf Abi Chatzera. He was a posek earlier in the 20th century. And he writes, obviously a Sephardic posek, and you'll see from the story, great story. He says, Mais, source number 11. Maisa shahaya shebizman nesiyatenu mi Morocco le Marselia. We were traveling from Morocco to Marseille, and I guess on the way to Eretz Yisrael. <coughs> And from Marseille, we went to Israel. That's, that was the immigration process from Morocco on the boats of Jerusalem. Obviously, there's no boats that dock in Jerusalem, but you know what? You get the, you get the imagery, right? He's making Aliyah. So it's time to daven shacharis. This is not. This is. These are not airplane rides. So you have to spend overnight on the boat, and so it's time to daven shacharis. We all wake up, get out of our cabins, and go to the shul on the boat. And of of course, you know, there's a a whole potpourri of different kinds of variety of different kinds of people that are on this boat making aliyah from all different parts of the world. There's Ashkenazim and there's Spartan, Okay, uh, and. And there were some Ashkenazi rabbis. He says, as soon as Chazara Sashatz begins, this must be sometime in the 40s or 50s, the rabbis, the Ashkenazi, those, those Ashkenazi rabbis, the riffraff, they start uh, talking in Divrei Torah. And they start going like this, and and steiging, and and clearing, and and shakla v'tariya, uvil pil pulim, v'lo he speak lahem kol ze ad shehalchu lemakom argaz hasfarim v'hotziu misham eiz hasfarim. He says, and they got so engrossed in their discussion. They said, come, come, and they they go and they go over to the bookshelf and they start opening up a whole bunch of svarim. This all during chazor sashats, v'hayu ma'ayanim b'hem u'makshimu matarzim b'koyle koylois. And they're constant, they're arguing disputations back and forth in loud voices. And this totally destroyed the decorum and the and the and the proper respect and awe that you're supposed to display for a shul. It was if they were back in the base medrash at a time when it's not davening.
It was just like totally so destructive the way they were behaving. Uvir oti kein, tamati tamiha raba, velo yaholti lisbolu lihit apek. And when I saw this, I was just filled with such, such, um, I was just like uh, blown away in a negative way. And I, I couldn't hold myself back. And uh, and I went over to these to these guys and I said, uh, gentlemen, what you're doing is Asr. He says, number one, you're acting like you're not in a shul. You're in a shul. Have decor. Have have decorum. And number two, you're doing this in the middle of Chazar Sashatz. And a certain rabbi whose name, I won't mention names, but his name was Rabbi <laughs> I don't know why he felt it important to mention this rabbi's name. And he says, you know, that he's a Talmud Chacham, and he says, what are you talking about, you Sephardic rabbi? You know, eh, Sephardim, you know, we don't have to listen to you. Of course it's permitted for us to do this. He says, um, he says, the Shulchan Aruch says explicitly that even if a person is in the middle of his silent Shmona Esrei, he's allowed to leave where he's standing, walk over to the bookshelf, pull a safer off the shelf, and check the halacha. So that's all we're doing. It's Chazar Sashaz. It's not even still a Shmona Esrei. It's the Chazar, what, so what, what are we doing that's so terrible? So Rav Machluf Abu Chaseira says, number one, I never heard of such a halacha, and I'm pretty well versed in Shulchan Aruch. And so what, what this rabbi was referring to is a Mishnah Bura that quotes a Chaye Adam. It's not really in Shulchan Aruch. And I have it for you over here, which, which Rav Abu Chaseira himself quoted later on. The Mishnah Bura in Simon Kuf Dalit quotes a Chaye Adam. If a person is in the middle of Shmon Esrei and he's not sure about something that he's saying in the middle of Shmon Esrei, do I need to say Yala V'yav or not? Or what's the correct Nusach of the davening? I don't have my sitter in front of me. Then, he says, that's what the Chayi Adam says. And he even goes so far to say, you could even be permitted to ask someone in the middle of your Shimon Esri, do we say Yala V'yavo today? In other words, because you're in the middle. So Rav Abi Chatzera says, this guy totally misunderstood that whole halacha from the Chayi Adam. The Chayi Adam's not talking about the heter to go ahead and treat Chazar Sashatz like it doesn't exist and start schmoozing in a Gemara in the Daf Yomi. He's talking about where you're in the middle of Shmon Esri and you can't proceed because you don't know what the halacha is as far as what you're supposed to say next. That's because of the needs of the Shmon Esri. You can interrupt your Shmon Esri. But to gratuitously go ahead and start schmoozing and learning in the middle of Chazar Sashatz and to disrupt the whole decorum, he says, there's no heter for that whatsoever. And he's like, basically, he's like, wow. He really blasts these Ashkenazi rabbis. Uh, he says, uh, he says, Umeat in the last paragraph, Mikol Hole Nira, Delo Yafe Asah Rabichil, not to mention any names. The Kamad Dvarim Shaloka Hogan Asa Ba Oso Limud Shahakol Nasa Be Isser. Echad Halimud Shaino Me Inyana Chazar. Number one, he was learning Torah that had nothing to do with Chazar as a shot. Bez Bitalaniat Baruchu Baruch Shemova Amenim. Number two, they weren't responding to the Chazar Sashas. They weren't re- saying Baruch Hu, Baruch Shemo. They weren't saying Amen. Gimel she'il medu mimenu, Amei ha'aretz la'sech sichat chulin. V'hu rachum yechaper avon. And finally, he says that they were setting a horrible example for the onlookers, who were not Talmidei Chachamim, but they see the rabbis engaged in disputations during Chazar Sashat. So they say, well, if they's... If those guys can schmooze in learning, we can schmooze about uh, anything else under the sun that, that we're interested in schmoozing in, right? And by the way, I want you to know, a lot of times, and this is, you know, some of my best friends talk during Chazar Sashatz, but the, the fact of the matter is, is that some people justify talking in the middle of uh, laning, in the middle of Chazar Sashatz, they say, listen, I'm talking and learning, what could possibly be wrong? 
but it ruins the decorum. And you have to realize, the more of a Talmud Chacham you are, the more of an example you're setting for other people who are going to say, it doesn't, you're saying to yourself, well, I was started, you know, Ben Gavra Le Gavra, in between Aliyahs, I was talking about an important idea that's in this Rashi or it's in this Medrash and it's about the Parsha. Okay, so they started laying another few psukim, so I'm going to continue the conversation. That's not right. You're setting a terrible example. The guy next to you, he's not distinguishing whether you're talking and learning or whether you're talking about the stock market. So you have to, you have to be alert. You have to be aware of it. Okay, I'm just going to conclude. So a lot of you may be saying to yourselves, I once saw the Rav open up a safer during Chazar Sashat. So what a hypocrite he is. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> I, I, don't have a, I don't have a great response, but I just wanted to show you two things. I, want to show you, I wanted to show you two things that, to conclude this year. Um, source number 12 is from the Sefer Avnei Yoshfei, which is a Shailas Tshuva Sefer, a modern Shailas Tshuva Sefer, published this uh, volume, volume 8, was published in Tafshin Ayin Aleph only six years ago. It's from Rabbi Sol Pesach uh, Feinhandler, who's a posek in Eretz Yisrael, I believe. And he was asked as follows. <laughs> Listen, I love the language. Nishalti mikama b'nei adam sheim lo yecholim la'anot amein bechazarat hashatz ki kashe lahem harikuz. Is I've been asked by a number of people who can't respond to Shmona Esri because they have trouble concentrating. What do we call that today? ADD. Veheim cholmim al dvarim acherim veeinam makshivim klal uchlal umemela laonim amen. These people are dreaming about all different kinds of things, and they just can't pay attention, and that's why they're not answering amen. So the question is. If we're not having a productive Chazara Sashatz, can we do something else that at least is use, pro, product, use, uh, useful, productive use of our time? So for these people, can they answer, can they learn Torah, or are they included in Al Tifrosh Min Hatzibur? No, you got to just be quiet. By the way, what I didn't publish for you, Rav Shlomo Zalman Arbach has quoted Talmidim in the yeshiva, asked them if they could learn Torah during Chazar Esajatz. He says to them, are you guys such masmidim that you're using every other minute of the day outside of tefillah to learn, yeah. right? That you need to learn even during Chazar Esajatz? He says, if yes, so then maybe. Okay, anyway. Kevin Shebe Arnu, She'en Kan Isur Rak Mitzad Choser Aniyat Amein. He says, we've already explained based on the Ramah Mipano, and that the Magen Avram quoted, that the, really the prohibition is that you have to make sure you're answering Amen. And there's also an additional aspect of prohibition, which is you shouldn't make yourself different from everyone else in the Tzibor. He says, therefore, if you're not going to answer Amen, then I really don't see any heter at all, because you're Parish Menat Sibur, you're not participating in a communal effort. But it would seem to me that the Ramah Mipano, that the Magen Avram quoted, does have a certain distinction to be drawn. It says, if everyone is actively engaged in a prayer, like slichos, and you sit to the side and study Torah, like we learned in Simen Sadi, that the Ramah Mipano agrees is not something that you should do. Aval im hu lomed Torah bizman chazarat hashatz, but if you're silent during Chazar Sashatz and you just have a safer open, he says, since they're not actively engaged in slichos, in, a, in, a, in an active tefillah, you're not, it's not as visible that you're doing something different from anybody else. And therefore, it's not as problematic. As long as you're silent during Chazar Sashatz, you're standing at your shtender with a safer. And you're not bothering anyone, so it could be that it's not as bad. And if you're not going to answer Amen anyway, because you're just like your mind is wandering and you can't focus 
on answering Amen, so you're not doing anything worse than you would have been doing had you been not learning. And therefore it's not so terrible. In other words, if you're the kind of person who's not going to answer Amen in the first place, because you find yourself with complete ADD and you can't focus on what the Shlich Tzibur is saying. By the way, another example could be, what if you can't hear the Shlich Tzibur? Or what if the Shlich Tzibur is, 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 Lashon HaKodesh is so poor that you have no idea what he's saying, right? Which sometimes unfortunately happens, right? So I think you can make this argument as well. Sof Davar Nira. He says, therefore, bottom line is, is that since the Ramah was Mekel, that during Chazaras Hashatz, we're not going to protest if a guy wants to learn. And also, not doing anything could bring a person to sin. Like we know the Gemara says, the Gemara says that not doing anything could bring a person to absolute boredom to the point of insanity and could cause him to have sinful thoughts. This is therefore better that you should study Torah than to be dreaming about other things, like what you plan to eat for dinner or what you plan to watch on, on Netflix or whatever. But don't publicize this. If, if you tell others, I'll have to kill you, he says, basically. <laughs> anyway, so then, and then, okay, so then I want, that, that was like basically the only posek I was able to find that was, that was prepared to go on record to say that it's okay to study Torah, but with the proviso that you're not going to be answering them in any way because you're totally a scatterbrain. Okay? And then finally, I found this tshuva very interesting from Rav Belsky of blessed memory because, you know, it's interesting. We all have Sfarim with us on Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. This, up until now, we've been talking about a shayla about learning during regular Chazor Sashats. But we all, we even advocate, bring reading material with you on Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur because it's a long davening. So when are people reading this material during Chazor Sashats? So why is it okay Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur and it's not okay if it, and it's so objectionable uh, during the rest of the year? So Rav Belsky writes uh, She'ela in the Sefer Shulchan HaLevi He says If the Shlich Tzir were saying a lot of piyutim V'chol maminim, Hashem Melech, Hashem Malach not to take anything away from the beautiful melodies, but there are some people who just like... Right, I agree. So he says, so let's, so let's see what he says. He says... There's more time in between each Amin. You have a significant amount of time. It's not two lines Amin, two lines broken. Right, exactly, exactly. So he says, Mutter lil maud af he says, that's okay. He says, but you shouldn't speak words of Torah in Musaf because you're not allowed to speak at all until you hear all of the mea kolos, all of the hundred blasts of the shofar. He says, Va'af, the second paragraph, he says, Va'af to Huva Bishulchan Aruch Shalo Yifrosh Minat Zibra Bamir Sapiyutim Vatchinos Vafilu Lasak Bidivrei Torah. He says, Even though the Shulchan Aruch and Simon Sadi had said that you're not supposed to se segregate yourself away from what everyone else is doing. If everyone else is saying, Bechol Maminim and Hashem Melech, Hashem Molach, then you should participate as well. Shon Mayri Vimi Shalomit Bishas Amir Sapiyutim Ve'ena Omram Be'atzmo. He says, that's when they're saying the words, because then you're segregating yourself, you're separating. But if the chazan is gurgling, right, as they say, that's, that's, the, that's the word they use, if he's singing and singing and singing, so then that's not a problem. He says, and therefore it's not a problem. But me who call arum but every cunning person or wise person should use his seichel. 
ועל יתראה לעיני אחרים כאילו הוא מזלזל בתפילת הציבור והשעת. And you should never demonstrate that you're sort of deprecating the whole prayer service. גם לא יגביע קולו, וזה פשוט לכל מבין. And also, don't raise your voice in your learning, because then, you know, that's obvious. You know, you, he's basically saying use common sense. Okay, we're, we're done with our sources. Questions, comments now, let's say, anyone? Well, yes? What about tefillah? No. What about tefillah? If you're allowed to get caught up on your tefillah during Chazor Shashat, why is tefillah better than learning? You're not. If you're in the middle of your shot. No, you said you are. You said the tzibur is basically getting caught up in the tefillah that they missed their karbonas. Okay, no, 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 no. So this, you're talking. You're, are you, you're referring to the. You're referring to this Yisrael Pesach fine, yeah. fine handler. Not, no, He's saying that actually. Uh, the the Ramah Mipanos Chuva was referring to both saying Tachnunim and learning. He said Ein Limchos Bi Adam. He says. Right. He, he leave, says it's leave it's alone. leave him alone. Don't okay. object, even though it's not the proper thing. Right. He himself says I don't. I'm not happy with it, but I'm not going to make us think about it. But this Rav Feinhandler who says that if you can't answer Amen, go ahead and learn, it's because you're being silent while everyone else is being silent. You're not doing anything that's noticeably different from the Tzibor. If everyone else is listening or silent during Chazar Sashats and you're there davening, then that's, that is a Poresh Minat Tzibor, that you're doing something that's noticeably different from everybody else, and that is objectionable. So what does it mean you should go outside? If you need to get caught up in davening, you should go outside during, during the Chazar Sashats? Well, if, if it's clear that you came in late for davening, so yeah. then, okay, then I don't think there's a problem of Porish Minat Zibar. It says, but if you daven Shimon Esri with everybody else, and then during Chazar Sashat, you're going to be doing something that's noticeably different. That's where there's a Porish Minat Zibar. But what if you daven very slowly, yeah. and, you ha and you have, and, and you, okay, you're davening an extra, extra long Shimon Esri? Shimon Esri. Yeah. Okay, so you have to understand, is that, you know, we're dealing with ideals, and there are many things that, that outweigh, you know, um, there are many Rabbanim who take an extra long Shmona Esrei and sacrifice their Chazar Sashats for that because they have a lot of Trinas to say. They have a lot of people to daven for, they have a lot of extra things that they need because they're thinking about a lot of different people in the seaboard. So, so, so they're creating a, a bad example. Well, we say that, you have a lot Well, they're not, they're not creating a bad example for Amaratzim if they're in the middle of Shmona Esrei. Right. The only thing that the what example are they creating? Amen. They're not answering Amin, <laughs> but they're davening. This is not this is not going to prompt Amaratzim to think that it's okay to talk during Chazar Sashats if the rabbi's uh, davening an extra long Shema. But if somebody's sitting there just learning and is not uh, doing shakal retaria with a, with a, with another person. What, how's an Amaris going to get the impression that basically he's doing something? Well, uh, okay, so, you know, I, I have to, you, this is my concluding thought, you know, uh, about this whole issue. We are in a generation like this Rabbi Feinhandler, like all of a sudden the halacha changed that no one's answering on it, right? Like, where did this come out of? This came, this is a 21st century attitude. We are fortunate that we have people coming to Minyan. We are fortunate that we have people that are willing to stand there during Chazar Sashats. To be honest with you, I, there's a part of me that agrees with what Alan is saying, is that, if anything, uh, someone opening up a safer during Chazar HaSashatz is not only, is, in, instead of setting a bad example, he's setting a positive example of, if you really don't have the Zitzfleisch, if you really don't have the, if you, if you got Spilkas and you got to do something, then do something that's not disruptive and it is, is spiritually productive at least. You know, we have all of these considerations that we've seen before. The Kafachayim says, you know, don't mix one tikkun with another tikkun, and uh, and you have to have both the private and the communal uh, Shemona Esrei benefits. It depends on what madrega you are. It depends on what madrega you are. So if you know that if I don't open up a safer, I'm going to be daydreaming, or worse, I'll be schmoozing, or I'll be checking my smartphone for my email, then, okay, so you're on that particular madrega, so for you, opening a safer is more appropriate. But that's not optimal, but, it's, but we have to be realistic about who we are. Let me ask okay. you one more question, then I'll, I'll shut up. Okay. Uh, when, when you were in Shiva, in Nair Yisrael, what was your experience with your Rabbanim during Chazar uh, HaShatz? Uh, my experience, a very good question. My experience was Yesh V'yesh. There were some, I know the Rosh Yeshiva, 
were extremely attentive, standing at their shtender. Rav Weinberg was for sure the dugma, and Rav Chait and Chafetz Chaim stood at attention, not moving an iota, saying Baruch Hu Baruch Shmo and Amen. That was the dugma. I had other Rebbeim who had Sfarim open during Chazar Sashats. They were not the Rosh Yeshiva, but they were on the Mizrach Vant nonetheless. They were on the Mizrach. So, again, you see, even when I, you know, 30 years ago or more when I was in Yeshiva, so there were diff two different approaches even back then. Man. But I remember the, the Rav, uh, the Rav used to make a, a very a strong distinction between Tefillah Bet and Tefillah Shel and he was very strict about standing at attention, facing Mizrach during the whole Chazar. That's why I think a lot of YU people tend to stand during the Chazar. Yeah. Well, he he said I think that there was you, you can't be Yotze Tfila Shel Sibur a, a communal thing unless you're standing in the same position as the right. as the Shliach. Yeah, I said this. I have to definitely one morning. Mm -hmm. Can you say that you have to be in the same. He's standing, you're standing, he's sitting, you're standing. Right, so that's the reason why many posts can say, that, like the Shulchan Aruch said, it's preferred to stand during Chazar Sashatz, so that you are participating, just like a Shomea Ka'one, yeah. where like when someone is making Kiddush, if they're standing, you should stand. If they're seated, you should sit. It's the same thing with Chazar Sashatz Eddie. What, what if you're like me, and if you wait on Monday and Thursday till after the, till after the Chazar Sashatz to start dabbing with everybody, you'll never finish. So I would say it's not a, it's not a good practice. I would say be mekatzer in your tachanun better, right? Would you say that about every so, uh, every prayer. So. You sure. Start off, you start off with the uh, shalia, and he's rushing ahead, and you're slower down. Right. So it depends. It depends where you are. Like when it comes to shmona esrei, tefillah b'tzibur is defined as beginning shmona esrei with the tzibur. But that's not true with Psuke de Zimra or even Birchas Kriyashma. So if you know that you take a longer time for Psuke de Zimra and Birchas Kriyashma, don't start with the Shleich Tzibur, start before him. Come to Shul a few minutes early. You know, that's, there's a particular minion which will go unnamed, of course, uh, in, our, in our illustrious Kihila that it prides itself on Shabbos morning and davening a 13 minute Psuke, or maybe a 12 minute by now, Psuke de Zimra which is, you know, that's like, you know, faster than the bullet trains in Japan. And uh, so, the, so I get a lot of complaints. So my response is, just come to shul a few minutes early, start, what's the big deal? Start Pesuki to Zimmer a few minutes early. In Eretz Yisrael, I was just at a minion, a very yeshivish minion in uh, Malo Dafna in Eretz Yisrael. All the minyanim now, in, in Eretz, many of them, they start at Mizmor Shir, Chanukah Sabayis Ladavid. That's when they start. What's going on? Everyone, they, they call davening for 645. For that's when Mizmar Shir begins. And everyone says Karbanos and Birchas Hashachar to themselves, so they come earlier. So you, you, know. see, you would say skipping a few paragraphs of Tachnin is preferable? I do it almost every, any, every Monday and Thursday. I can't get through the whole thing. I don't have time. And, and less words and more meaning is always better. Yes, Howard. I, just find, I find it hard to believe that somebody who can't concentrate enough to say Amen would be able to concentrate enough to learn Torah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to me, it's just, it's not, it's not what it's, it's not, it's not, it's not congruous? No, I, I can, I, I can appreciate it. There are some people, I mean, yeah, no, there are some people who get a, who get a joy out of learning Torah and get no joy out of answering Amen. But getting joy out of it, not being able to concentrate are two different things. No, not really, not really, because you're able to, yes, obviously. So, a, subtle, uh, a subtle distinction from the question that Eddie asked you a moment ago, but especially uh, this coming week when Minion starts, you can't start early, and sometimes you have to leave Minion early. So, in order to say Ashrei Lamanzeach Valetziyam Alenu, etc., if if you don't say it during Chazara, you're not going to say it at all. Or is it better to not say it? That you could probably say while you're driving in the car. Turn off the radio. You could say while you're driving. You could say those things. So yeah. So the question is: Is it better to say it while you're driving, or better to say it during Chazara Sashatz? <laughs> It's, you know, those, th neither of those are optimal choices, right, you know, so, but I would still say better to leave Chazar Sashat sacrosanct, don't, don't daven, because again, it's, you've got the additional issue, you've got Poresh Minat Sibor, yeah, you've got Poresh Minat Sibor, and you've also got the issue that, you know, it, it may not be a good example.
you know, because other people will learn from that. Okay. As long as you're there, Poppy. As long as you're there when Tachanun. Don't leave. Don't leave before Tachanun. Yes. 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 You're absolutely right. You're absolutely.